In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. We are called to be stewards of the mysteries of God. And we look at faith and look at science. We wonder if they're in opposition. As Catholics, they are not. Faith and reason go hand in hand. You can look to a scientist to ask how. You look to faith to ask why. Recently, a new solar system was discovered, TRAPPIST-1. TRAPPIST is an acronym for Transiting Planets and Plantissimal Small Telescope. It was a Belgian group, and they named the uh, telescope after their favorite beer, which is TRAPPIST beer. Of course, the TRAPPISTs are monks. They're part of the order of Cistercians of the Strict Observance, known as TRAPPISTs, because their lead monastery, founded by St. Bernard, Clairvaux was in La Trappe. Now there's a Trappist monastery in Massachusetts, in Spencer, just outside of Sturbridge, and they also make beer. That's not today's good news. <laughs> it's uh, one of those like IPA type of beers. It's very expensive. But they make beer, they make jelly, Trappist preserves, and they also make vestments. I'm wearing one today. It's the uh, Tommy Hilfiger of vestments. You see, Father Carlos, his mother knows how to sew. My mother knows how to tape. <laughs> so this new solar system is named after basically a group of monks that make beer. It sounds like good news to me. Why is it important? Because they found three planets in that solar system that are in the habitable zone, also known as the Goldilocks zone. It's not too cold, it's not too hot, it's just perfect for the fact that there may be life on other planets. So. What does it mean for us? It is up to scientists and the faithful of God to learn more about what God created and how he created it. Albert Einstein pointed out, he said, not everything that can be counted counts, and not everything that counts can be counted. So are we alone in the cosmos, or are there others in the universe? We're not about to go out and look for UFOs, Although Father Carlos has a telescope and he's always out in the parking lot looking at stars. And I always say, get in here. You're going to get hit by the people doing drive road in the parking lot. <laughs> Science fares well in many respects, but it does not fare well in answering the questions such as, what should I do? Whom should I love? What can I hope for? But the church invites us to harmonize faith and reason as both are important to human well-being. Our goal is to build a civilization of love. So that the truths of faith and the truth of reasons, including scientific reason and philosophy, can never in principle be opposed. Because God is the author of the book of grace, Revelation, which we just read, and God is the author of the book of nature, which we just enjoyed until it got cold. We have lots of questions in the church, and our track record is a little muddled. Questions about creation, questions about evolution, questions about miracles, the church's treatment of Galileo, whose daughter was a nun and was a lifelong Catholic. John Paul II retried Galileo, and he acquitted him this time, but no one seemed to got that memo. And questions about stem cell research. Sacred scripture teaches the truth about creation in a nonlinear, in non-scientific way. That was their cosmology. The scientific method did not exist at the time. But who invented the scientific method? Roger Bacon, a Franciscan priest. Who invented methods to make sure your milk wasn't dangerous? Louis Pasteur, practicing Catholic. Marie Curie, René Descartes, Copernicus, Gregor Mendel, a monk. All these people took seriously our charge from sacred scripture to be stewards of the mystery of God. Science can purify religion from error and superstition, and religion can purify science from idolatry and false absolutes. When we look at science, we'll take one of those, creation. Well, it was created in seven days. It says that in the Bible. But the Bible is not a scientific document. In fact, when it says seven days, the other translation is God made a covenant. So it very well could have happened that evolution and creation 
is all very true. And that jives, if you will, with our belief. Because we're not fundamentalists, we're not literalists. We look at scripture in context. We read the whole Bible all the way through, from Genesis to Revelation, and then we start to think about, we don't proof text and grab one line out and say, this is the truth, but what about the contradicting passages in scripture? It's all very interesting. But you be, can be confident that when you have a discussion with a scientist, you don't have to leave your faith behind. The more we learn about the created world, the more we're able to give glory to God. One of the most famous scientists of all time is Father Georges Lemaitre, who is responsible for, right, okay, so maybe not that famous. Father Georges Lemaitre created the Big Bang Theory, not, not the show, theory. So be confident that you don't have to leave your faith to believe, but that to discover builds up your faith. It's a very different approach. There is even a, a pontifical society for science. There uh, is a Vatican observatory at the University of Arizona because Rome has too much light pollution. You can't see anything in Rome except restaurants and churches. But think about it. They're not opposed, although they are in popular culture. No, they work together hand in hand and have throughout the years, throughout the centuries. We're very fortunate to be part of a church that has always included in its universities a great study of science. Many of the craters of the moon are named after Jesuit priests. Many of the theories that have been advanced come from people of deep belief because we want to understand God. As much as we understand sacred scripture, we should understand the world in which we live and ourselves. In this way, we do indeed give glory to God as we look at our responsibility to be stewards of creation.